Reports from Nairobi, Kenya reveal that protesters are planning their next move after successfully forcing the government to withdraw its planned tax hike. I think many would view this as a resilience against all kinds of adversity with the issues the citizens are facing so similar to what's going on in the Nigerian space. It's also important for us to find out what leaders can learn, what citizens can learn from this kind of resilience as displayed by the protesters in Nairobi in Kenya. We have a special guest joining us now, Barista Chia Gozie Uwabuko, a chartered mediator, legal practitioner, and a conciliator. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning, Nandi. Good morning. <laughs> lots of headlines we've read so far. I mean, seeing even at the weekend, we saw lots of opinion leaders, analysts saying that mm. the Nigerian government should not let it get to this. They should try and do something now. You know, everything that happens over there, we bring it home. Yeah. And this one, there's a striking similarity. Many people were throwing it back to the NSAS protests, how the protesters were treated, how resilient that these protesters were. Mm. What, what, what was your general assessment of the protests in Kenya? And did you feel any kind of similarity between what happened last week and the issues we're facing here in the country? Well, we have um, similarities and then we also have the similarities. Similarities that we have similar economic issues on the ground. In fact, the, the depth profile of, of, of Kenya is even lesser than that of Nigeria. The debt profile of Kenya is, is, is about is about 80 billion US dollars, right? But Nigeria's debt profile is about 92.1 billion dollars. So, we, so both of us are huge debtors. Nigeria is a huge debtor. Then Kenya is a huge debtor. But then we now have the similarities. In Kenya, we see people who are united to pursue a particular goal. In Nigeria, we always have the, this, this um, discrepancy that you are from this part of the country or you present this religion or this particular ethnic group. We, we, we saw how the ancestral protest, uh, protest panned out. At a point in time, they started seeing it as, as an evil thing and people started being profiled because at the outset, it was like the youth came out you know, to protest. But then, a long period of time, you know, I discovered that it was being tilted or being misinterpreted to be projected by a particular ethnic group. So, so in this, so we have similarities that both countries are huge debtors, both domestic and, and then foreign debts, especially to China and then to the IMF, who actually dictated. Okay, another also similarity is that what Ruto was trying to do was the dictates of IMF, which is what Tinubu did hook, line, and sinker, because IMF gave them the instruction to go and jack up the taxes so that you can pay back your debts, you mm -hmm. know, and refund the debts that you borrow, uh, the money that you borrow from IMF. So that was what, but in Nigeria, it will give us instruction, you will jack up the, 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 the tax, and then Nigerians will pay, willy-dilly, happily, we pay, and then we continue. So those are the areas that we have divergences, you know. In Nigeria, we take it in line, that, but the uh, Kenyans said no. We will not take this. So they are still there marching on and then insisting that, in fact, they, they have actually gone beyond the issue of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the Finance Act 2024. They are, in fact, they are even calling for Ruto Sack. So, so all the problems of Kenya, they are they have now hit it on mm -hmm. root on now. In fact, the perception abroad is that Nigerians are very rich. They believe that when we travel, we're ready to spend so much. They have stores built for people from Africa, like from Nigeria too. Yeah. They have stores built. So the impression is that we are buoyant. And it would appear that if we're willing to pay taxes, even when we can't afford to, without pushing back willingly, like you rightly said, mm -hmm. then maybe we're as buoyant as we're making ourselves out to be. Mm -hmm. Namdi. <laughs> I, I, I mean, what, 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 what Barisha just raised an important point, which is the fact that uh, for so long, um, people like the IMF have, and World Bank have dictated uh, fiscal financial policies for different countries in Africa. Yes. A lot of what we call our budgets, our plans for the year, are usually, you know, it's like writing an advert based on a brief. So IMF gives us our brief and we do our annual budget based on what they want. And credit to the youths in Kenya. Because what you normally find is sometimes you find a leader trying to do the right thing, then you find um, foreign NGO sponsored protests yes. to counter it. Yes. But this was the opposite. Yes. This was now an organic youth movement. Mm -hmm. Simplest way to do an organic youth movement. There were no uniform placards. Yes. Well printed. Mm -hmm. This was raw youth coming out and doing it. So credit to the Kenyan youth for coming out and fighting something that needs to be fought in Africa, um, which is the over-dependence and over-indulgence of these foreign financial people. But now let me ask you a question, Barrister, because, you know, we can see the panic in the 
uh, in Abuja, consider seeing stuff like Nightmare Right instead of other social media. Mm. Oh, wait, we should not let it get to this. Mm. No, Nigeria would not let it get to this. Even some quiet threats, this cannot happen in Nigeria. Mm. You know, we've been saying that. Mm. We saw it nearly happen, yeah. starting from places like Kano. Yes. When it was almost like the governor was going to be removed. Do you think that this government can go four years without a Kenya type incident happening? The Kenya type incident is not going to happen in Nigeria again. I, I, NSAS has taught them a very big lesson. So mm. I, I think they will be proactive this time around to stop a youth movement. The federal government, as it were, constituted now, will not allow this Kenya incident to happen. In fact, what the government will do is to checkmate Nigerians. If, because you see how it started in Kenya was the same way it started in, 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 in uh, NSAS. It was an organic thing online. It was it started from an online sensitization. And then, mm. you know, it was not centralized. Exactly what happened. It's like, it's like they, they borrowed the, the, the leaf from Nigerian yeah, leaves. Yeah. Understand? It was an online thing. From then, the online thing, then it, it became organic and then it was not centralized. In fact, even the Kenyans all will dissipate very soon. Mm. Definitely. It will but at least they've gotten them to reverse the bill. Yeah, yeah. So, so that has been achieved. It will dissipate unless the opposition government is now sponsoring the, pro the protest. Mm. It will not be the opposition as a pressure group. But once there is no central protest, you know, central organizing committee that are responsible. What the Kenya government will do, they will simply do what the Nigerian government did, just to sponsor um, dissension. In the midst of the protest, I able to go back home. Then, then, the Nigerian government will not allow it to happen again. In fact, in fact, the, the, the NSAS protest was an eye-opener that youth can come together as one for once in Nigeria and stand for their rights. So, they will not allow it to happen again. If they try it again, you know what the government will simply do? They will start sharing palliatives, everybody will go back home. They will share palliatives. They will tell you, go back to your governor. Your governors have your palliatives. And the protesters will go back home to share palliatives. Or they will, they, will, they will weave a narrative that these are sponsored by the Igbos who are trying to leave Nigeria. And then the, the people who are from the other part of the country will see it as, ah, this is an Igbo thing, you know. And the whole thing will go down. So it will not happen again. In fact, the answers oh, scenario, I'm very sure. Will not happen in Nigeria. Again. I was so shocked because I was in Lagos during Enters and I was shocked when the narrative of IPOP bond to Definitely. Gates. And I, I was, because I mean, where I lived was not very far from those Lekki Two Gates. And in my mind, I'm saying IPOP bought the. At the point I, I, they, they started going after DJ Switch. And as I said, yes. going after DJ Switch, who is an Enugu girl, you know, they, 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 they did it in such a way that they started whooping up that same thing like this is an Igbo thing. Mm. And, and, and Nigerian government, they are, they are, they are masters are, they are, they are masters are, you know, you know, confusing the masses based on a long ethnic and religious. Oh, yeah, they are, they are very careful who they go after. Mm. I noticed they were careful not to go after Aisha Yusufu, yes. Moabu. Yes. They were very careful who they know who to go after. Yeah. I guess DJ Switch hadn't been in the political or yeah. activist thing long enough. Mm. So they went after. But, you know, coming back to the parallels between you know, what happened in Kenya mm. and what happened in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, I remember the answers insisting that there was no leader. Mm. And I remember there were those who insisted that they were the leaders. Yes. Uh, Shegu Awosoya, probably known as uh, Sega Link Online and some others, yes. insisted that they were the leaders. Mm. We didn't see anybody in Kenya mm. come out and say, no, we are the leaders and we will negotiate with the government. Yes. It was just this one, we won't go and do it. Mm. Do you think that for something like that to happen in Nigeria again, Maybe you, I mean, you say the government will let it happen again. Yes. But if it follows the Kenyan model where people just don't care. And I want to put another caveat. I think that if the next movement starts in somewhere like Kano, mm. you will not be able to blame it on any ethnic group. <laughs> you, see, you see, if it starts in Kano, it will be managed better. How do I mean? If it starts in Kano, what the government will simply do is to declare a state of emergency. You know, Kanu is very pivotal for Nigerian government. So, mm. so in fact, it's, 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 it's going to be a silver lining for the federal government to take over Kanu state. So they will not mm. write. If there's an uproar in Kanu, there will be a state of emergency and APC will take over Kanu. So they, they, they will know this optics. They will not try that. So that's the issue. So they will not try it. So, so the, the, the worrisome aspect of it is that Nigeria is, is, is complex. It's unlike Kenya. So Nigerians, Nigerians are complex. We have a different way of, of doing things. That, that's just the problem. Nigeria is complex. You can't just say, let's have a, an amorphous group of persons coming to lead a, a, a campaign for, for good governance in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen again. Mr. Chagose, what does the law say about protesting? Because we've also, um, I mean, we have to talk about the issue of killing, killing mm. protesters when mm. these things are going on. We saw some killings that took place in Kenya and the killings that took place here 
in Nigeria, though the government is still denying uh, some of those mm. killings, or if not all of them. So what does the law say about protesting? Well, there, there, there's nothing wrong with protesting. In fact, you have freedom of movement, you have freedom of association, you have freedom of airing your view. You can owe a view. So you can say that the government is not doing well. You can gather people, but then, as long as it's not an unlawful assembly, an unlawful gathering, it's not a, um, a, a, an association of people who have been banned from operation, like a terrorist organization or some organizations that have been banned by various laws of the states or the country, people can gather and protest. But once the protest doesn't get violent, mm -hmm. then there's nothing wrong with protest. Does the destruction of public infrastructure count as violence? Definitely. So can that, Definitely. Uh, can that allow the security operatives to fire sh uh, shots? At not the live bullets, not live bullets, bullet. bullet. not live bullets. You can, you, can, you can try to control because normally before you protest, you write to the police seeking permission, not permission to protest, but then to provide security. In fact, before a protest should take place, the police should be there on ground too even aid the protesters, why the protesters are protesting to protect public facilities. That, that, that's normal thing. So because the presence of the police or security agencies is to make sure there's no breakdown of law and order. So naturally, the police should be there to protest, to protect the, the protesters because there can be infiltrators. You may have a, a, a peaceful protest that and happens then a lot. Some, some infiltrators will infiltrate it and then start on one turn destruction of property and public utilities. So the police should be there to protect the protesters and then to make sure that there's no breakdown of law and order. Now, the issue I said that, that whatever happened in Kenya Miro will not happen in Nigeria. Remember, the Kenyans, when the extra mile, they, they, they even attacked the, 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 the parliamentarians. Mm. The Nigerians were located in a place. They were just in Lake, they didn't move. They were just at Lokito Gate, and then the military came there and shot them. That's why I said that the, the, the Nigerian government will not take this. So in Kenya, we have civil, a, a very civil government. That, that, that waited and, until they brought the war to their doorsteps, and, and, and then parliamentarians were scaling the fence and had to run um, to their jail. Driving with speed out. Of with, so, so, so they attacked, in fact, they, they attacked the parliamentarians. Can the, Nigerian like what we have in Nigeria. can the Nigerian government ever, ever bow to pressure? Can they ever be forced to do anything? <laughs> I don't know. I can't say for now. Because the way I see the, 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 the way I see the government moving, I don't see anybody. But okay, look at what they are doing, level. Up to today, we don't even know what the minimum wage is. Mm. And labor appears to have been incapacitated. The labor is tired, labor is weak. Labor has been brought beaten. They don't know what to Why do again. Why do you think they're tired? If I, what is labor doing again? The governor should meet and say, hey, we are going to discuss. Uh, it's like each state will decide what they will pay. And labor will now only scream, scream like a shunned girlfriend. And I say, hey, they will now scream and say, hey, hey, you should not do that now. No. So labor has been brown beaten, labor has been de defeated, labor has been decapitated in Nigeria. As we speak now, there's no time frame within which the federal government can submit, you know, proposals to the National Assembly to deliberate. So everything is hanging in limbo and labor is not doing anything about it. Lots of shouting down in West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so, Namdi. I mean, I mean, I mean, which, which country was it recently? I think it was Burkina Faso or uh, Captain Traore. What country is that? And, uh, he, he wanted to have... Uh, prepare for elections and the people started protesting hmm. that they don't want elections, they want him to stay. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, and and I, I think that shocked the whole world. Because since he came in there, he's done reforms, he has cut the salary of civil servants, including his own. Hmm. Like and then he said, okay, let's organize elections, let's bring the people back to power. And he started a nationwide protest. And um, but you see because he's a military leader, that didn't make the international mm -hmm. news. It's not the kind of news mm -hmm. yes. he wants to carry. Yes. But it always begs the question that, you know, as some elder programming we always say in Africa, do we need this democracy in Africa? Should we not go back to our regional governments and give our traditional rulers more power and, mm -hmm. and let's modify the indirect rule the colonialists did and move back into the way we understand to govern mm -hmm. ourselves? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's, it's, it, it, you see countries like that have the culture like us, mm -hmm. and look at who made them strong. Mm -hmm. You look at people like Nehru, strong men like Nehru. Mm -hmm. um, you look at Korea, um, I said Korea, sorry, Singapore. Mm -hmm. You also have another strong man, 30 mm -hmm. years, but he made them one of the richest countries mm -hmm. per capita in the world. You look mm -hmm. at Sheikh Zayed, Dubai. These guys were not, mm -hmm. they were not Democrats. Yes. But they built legacies that have made their people prosperous. You know? So you begin to ask yourself, these countries are all very culturally inclined. Mm. If you're not in an extremely secular society, mm. is democracy, as we practice it, yes. right for us, or do we need to shift back to something closer to our culture? You see, you see democracy is not a problem. 
Mm. And military, military interregnum or military rule is not even the solution. We, see, now, now Nigeria is a conglomeration of stream bed fellows. We, yeah. we, we have to tell ourselves the truth. Yeah. What works for Northern Nigeria will definitely not work for Southeast Nigerians. So you might have a system of government working for the North. You're talking about giving powers back to the uh, our traditional rulers. Like the regions. It will not work in the Southeast. That is a fact. No, I mean like push back to each person, do yeah. practice as you practice. Exactly. So, so, so each other, because the, the, the idea of the concept of the democracy as it's practiced in Nigeria was actually out of us to the, to the start, to the evils of Nigeria, that the people who do universal adult suffrage, we are, Adult males can come together, and in fact, it was before prior to the colonial adventure, we are the real Democrats. Yeah. So it can work here. I, I can tell you for free that in yeah. the Buzo where I'm from, yes. we are on the first Ubuzo of Ubuzo, the first. Okay. The Diokpa system has been working for us That's what I'm up until 10, 15 mm. years ago. We had never had the Paramount ruler. <laughs> Never. So, 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 so in the south is uh, in the Igbos generally. You know what I'm If their system will work, that's why today we still have the Omona system. That even if you want to bury your late father, and no man, every single member will say, "I have an interest." You say, "Who are you?" I say, "I'm your uncle. I'm your from this other side." So, it works for us. Then it is not going to work in the northern Nigeria. The Emiri system will definitely perfectly work for them. So, we, we, we were a complex country. So, no system, single system will work for us. So, let us we have an arrangement that allows regions to run the way they feel they can run. And then we have a weak center. If we have that, then mm -hmm. I think we can and, be and getting we're, close we're to more prosperous that. under that definitely. system of regions definitely. than now. So, so, now, just to round this conversation up, what can the Southeast learn, both leaders? and the residents here in the southeast, what can all of us learn from what happened in Kenya? Well, what we can learn is that the power still resides in the people. For, there's one something I believe in, in, in for Nigeria, you understand? We may find it difficult to attack the, 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 the protest against the big behemoth of the presidency, but then we can tell our governors you are not doing well. At least when you come to Enugu and there's a policy of government in Enugu that is not panning well with the people. The people of Enugu can stand and say, is this silly, sir, with respect, sir, you are not getting it right here. So, so we can learn that the power still resides in the people, and the people can civilly, without being violent, air there, you sustain it, and then we can have things working out for us. But then, if we have people who are, have something in common, like in Inugu or Abia, in Inimu State, they can stand up to misgovernance and then sustain it without being violent, then believing that with the process of time, we can get our leaders to listen to us and get one or two things done right. Thank you so much, Barry Sababuko. I mean, lots of insights there, and I hope the right ears are listening. It's very important <laughs> because we just want to move forward. Thank you so much once again. My pleasure.